Hi guys, it's Panda here. This video is an ultimate guide on what you should focus on after completing the Iceborne story. If you're new to the game, you may be confused as to what really to do after you've completed the story cutscene. Don't worry, we've broken your to-do list down to explain why you should do what you should be doing. But before warned, spoilers are everywhere in this video. At Master Rank 22, you have your assigned quest to kill Reina Nagigante and then Shara Ishvelder. After killing Nagigante, you become Master Rank 23. And after completing the cutscene and story credits, all your previously sought experience will be added onto your Master Rank. You will at least be Master Rank 24 right after that, assuming you didn't do any optional quest. If you are new to the game and have not farmed anything in the base game, the first thing that you need to do is to farm mentals as they help you a great deal in your battle. For more information about farming mentals and boosters, check out this video. At Master Rank 24, you will be asked to research on the Kirin with a broken horn. This is a special assignment given by the Admiral who stands near the council table. Once you have defeated this Kirin, another special assignment quest will be triggered. In this quest, you will have a cutscene of Rajang doing his daily stuff. You don't have to complete this quest. Just by watching the cutscene, you will unlock the volcanic region in the Guiding Lands. And also, the next special assignment quest will be triggered. This quest is given by the Seeker. He stands opposite to Admiral on the other side. In this quest, you will have to hunt a Stygian Xenogar. Same goes with this quest. Once you have watched the cutscene, you unlock the Tundra region. Oh wow! These tracks! It's like they're pulsing with energy! In Iceborne, mentals can be upgraded to allow you to put decorations in the mentals. And when you wear the mentals in battle, those skills that are in the decoration slots will be activated. This is very useful to help us put more skills in our builds. On the other hand, boosters will get more area of effect and increased uptime. This is useful to help us in our battle as well. For more information on how to farm mental upgrades, check out this video. Event Quests At Master Rank 24, most events and special assignments are unlocked. But there are some event quests that need you to be Master Rank 100 to be able to farm them. Events are really a useful way to farm items that we need. Here's a list of events that may be helpful for your farming in your early game. The Lord of the Underworld beckons for early game bone materials. Note that Guiding Lands ones aren't dropped here. Desert Deserts, obtaining ore materials at early game. A fish to whet your appetite, getting Wetfish Fin Plus and Wetfish Dual Blades. A new troublemaker in town. This is for early mastering XP farming. Hunter Blunderer. This is for tough bones and mastering XP. Colorful Carnival. This is for Fae Wyvern Gems and mastering XP. A curious experiment. For large Wyvern Gems and mastering XP. Fired up bruises for Monster Slog Bones and Mastering XP. 50 Shades of White. This gives Guild Weapons. Very good for early game. In the Depths of a Forest, Monster Solid Bones and Mastering XP. The Winter Blues for Large Elder Dragon Bones. We Three Kings for Large Elder Dragon Gems. A Shocking Climax. This is for upgrading Geralt and Final Fantasy base game weapons to Mastering. Wolf Out of Hell, Stygian Zinoga materials. The Wrath of Thunder Descends for rare jewel farmings when you have better gears. Steamworks. Iceborne has also made farming in the game easier by introducing a new Steamworks mechanics where you can get plenty of items. Just do some mining in the Guiding Lands for fuel and you can get items like armor spheres that's needed to upgrade your armors, steam tickets for melding items, gold and silver melding tickets for melding jewels, celestial wyvern prints for melding rare monster parts and more. For the easiest way to farm steamworks, check this video out. Armor pieces 
In the early game, a strong build is important to help you go forward. You can aim to make some of these pretty good early game armor parts. Rajang Hate and Belt for Weakness Exploit, which gives you a higher chance to deal critical hits when hitting weak or wounded parts. Garuga Greaves for Critical Eye, which gives you a higher chance to deal critical hits. Damascus Shirt and Belt for Focus that helps you charge your weapon faster if the weapon you're using needs it, like Great Sword, Charge Blade, Switch Axe, Charge Shots of Gun Lance and Hammer. Volcana's Armors for Divine Blessing and Critical Element, which allows you to deal more elemental damage when your hits are critical. This is for elemental weapons only. Kirin's Griefs and Kirin's Alpha Hoop for free element. This is for if you are using bow guns to hold more clips of ammo or if your weapon has a hidden element and you wish to bring out the hidden element to use it. Stygian Zenoga Vambraces for a part breaker that helps you break parts easier. To understand more about how to make a build, you can watch these videos. Also, remember to have health boost 3 in all your builds. If you do not have the vitality jewels, you can always melt them. Later on in the mid game, you should aim for Terrestra for Master's Touch, Zora Magdaros for Artillery Secret, Nagakuga for True Razor Sharpness or Spare Shot, Acidic Glavinus for Handicraft. In the end game, we suggest farming Raging Brachydos for Agitator Secret, Safijiva Siege for Dragon Vein Awakening and Weapons, Kuf Taraf Siege for Guts and Very Good Jewel Slots and Skills, and together a few weapons that have critical elements on them. Frostfang for Punishing Draw, and Slugger Secret with Good Jewel Slots and Skills. Mastering Checkpoints After claiming the story, you will be entering this new map where you have all the old maps connected to each other. This map has levels to each region and all monsters will take turn to spawn here depending on your region levels. These monsters we hunt here will drop new items that allows you to craft better armors, augment your weapons, upgrading charms from high rank to master rank. So this map is where you will spend a lot of your time in to farm items. Therefore, it is important to understand the mechanics of this new map. After the cutscene, you will get a special assignment to kill Kirin. Follow this assignment quest series to unlock the Volcanic and Tundra region. There are a total of 6 regions. Forest, Wallspire, Coral, Rotted, Volcanic, Tundra region. Monsters will spawn and then leave the Guiding Lens and new monsters will enter the map after a while. If you fight them or if they are on low health, they will stay around for a longer period of time. The Guiding Lens has no fainting limit, but if you faint, your rewards will be reduced every time you faint. So always report your investigation to the handler as soon as you're done with the hunt. The main focus of your Guiding Lens is to get items for augmentations, upgrading equipments and farming new armors. To do this, you need to raise your region levels by researching monsters. The more you research, the more your region levels will increase. After you kill a monster, some regions will increase in XP and some will decrease. If you go to the handler and click on Lure Out Monster, you can see which monster only spawns in which regions. Say, Anjana can only be lured out in the forest and Wallspire region. That means, if you hunt Anjana or pick up its tracks, only forest and Wallspire regions will gain research experience, while the other regions will drop. Every monster has specific regions where it will spawn, some monsters only spawn in one region, and some monsters can be spawned in all the regions. This may all be very confusing, but it is necessary to work through these because at a higher region levels, stronger monsters start to appear and drop rare items. The maximum level that each region can go up to is level 7. 
However, you can only bring three regions up to level 7 easily. This happens because as one region level goes up, the other starts to go down. Therefore, it is wise to plan what regions you want to max and then only kill the monsters that brings those levels up. And because of this, it is almost close to impossible to bring all 6 regions up to level 7 as this requires you to have killed thousands and thousands of tempered elder dragons. You may find your guiding lens levels to be capped initially. You will need to do these assigned quests that are only available at these levels to raise your mastering and guiding lens levels. At Master Rank 49, Sleep Now in the Fire, where you fight the Tempered Raffian and Nightshade Palumu. After completing this, your Guiding Lens region level cap will increase from 4 to 5, which allows you to farm Rarity 10 augmentation materials for your weapons. At Master Rank 69, Big Burly Bash, where you have to fight a Tempered Brachios and Glavinus. After completing this, your Guiding Lens region level cap will increase from level 5 to 6, which allows you to farm Rarity 11 augmentation materials for your weapon. At Master Rank 99, to the very ends with you, where you have to fight Reina no Gigante. After completing this, your Guiding Lens region level cap will increase from 6 to 7, which allows you to farm Rarity 12 augmentation materials for your weapon. In this video, there are some useful tips which will help you farm better in the Guiding Lens. You may also wish to check out this build that will help you farm better in Guiding Lens. All videos that we have stated in this video are in the description below. In the Guiding Lens, you also have Mining Knots and Bone Powers that are not shown on the map. You will need to gather them for augmentations and steam works as well. However, the Mining and Bone levels do not affect the region levels. Alright, that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it helped you guys. Good luck everyone with your farming. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.